All right, welcome back to the channel. I'm going to be talking about colored pencil fundamentals where I talk about the colored pencils I use, the paper, as well as the tools and how to blend and apply the tools with the colored pencils. And at the end, I'm going to be going over how to draw a butterfly. So let's get started. Alright, so let's talk about colored pencils first. These are Caran d'Ache Luminance. They are a wax-based colored pencil that are light fast, which means that they will last a lifetime. They are very smooth, so they're really good for blending. And these are Faber-Castell. These are one of my favorites. They are an oil base, so they're very firm and they're really good for detail. They are also light fast. Prismacolors are the best color pencils to start out with. They're very budget friendly. They're also wax based so they uh, blend very well and they're also really good for detail. So all around they're really great to start out. Paper is the most important thing to choose. There's a variety of paper and it's really just up to what you prefer to use. Pastel mat is a thick paper that has a lot of tooth, so it's very easy to build up your layers. The downside about it is that you have to build up so many layers to be able to add your detail in. Bristol Smooth Surface is my first paper that I used when I was starting out with commissions. It's very reasonably priced and easy to use and it is a smoother surface so that it doesn't have as much tooth. Uh, the downside is that your darks won't get as dark as you want, but the upside is that it's very easy to draw on. Tone Tan Paper is uh, the very, very first paper that I tried color pencils on using Prismacolor. Uh, they're really great for drawing other animals um, or insects that don't have as much detail uh, to layer on, such as fur. It's great for sketches and it's reasonably priced. Fabriano Artistico Watercolor Paper. This is my um, favorite one. This is what I use the most. It is hot pressed, not cold pressed. And the reason why is so that it's a flatter surface. It still has a little bit of tooth to it. However, it is thick enough that you can build up your layers and not destroy the paper. Blending is an important step to learn when using colored pencils. I am using the Bristol Board Smooth Surface Paper with Prismacolor colored pencils. I'm showing you this with the, these two because those are the most reasonably priced to start out with. And I wanted to show you that you can still draw uh, using these start out with these instead of using high quality um, colored pencils and paper. Now start out with your pencil at an angle and your hand further away from the base of the pencil. You want to draw very lightly and evenly. I'm going to be um, using two different colors so that you can see how I blend the two. Now they're pretty evenly blended for this example. I'm going to show you a bad example as well. This is when you are too close to the tip of the pencil and you're pressing down too hard. This is not going to allow you to build up your layers and you won't be able to apply your tools as well, such as the X-Acto knife later on that I'll show you. It will not, um, it will not show up because you haven't, you don't have enough layers built up. And you can see they're not blending very well. There's still a very definite line in between the two. Burnishing is when you build up your layers with colored pencils to the point where it's very evenly smooth. Now I'm using a variety of colored pencils that uh, mimic skin color to show you as an example. Now just keep building up those layers lightly and then once you get to the um, top couple layers you can start to um, press down a little bit harder to make it more smooth. 
I use light colors to uh, burnish on the top, such as white or a very, very light pastel color. Highlights are actually pretty hard to make. I like to use an embossing tool for whiskers or white fur that's very uh, definite white. And what you do is you want to press down on the paper before you actually draw anything. Wherever you see those whiskers or those highlights, you just want to press down using the smallest tip of the embossing tool. And don't press down too hard, but just enough where you can see the indention. And then once you've done that and you, you can start coloring over it. Now you want to start with light layers, of course. So once you start building up those layers, you can really start to see uh, the effects that it creates and you'll have those white highlights. Now another method that you can use to create highlights would be to use something like an X-Acto knife. Once you've built up your layers, uh, now of course you want to use light layers to build up, you'll be able to scrape away uh, what's there and then you can start to see what's underneath. You can also use a slice tool which is something that I like to use. This is something that you can buy online on their website and this will create very beautiful little highlights and I like to use it also for uh, creating detailed fur and not just for the whiskers. I'm very picky about my sharpeners. The first one I got was a Derwent uh, handheld sharpener. This one you can sharpen with uh, all different size pencils. The only issue I had was that I had to do quite a lot of uh, work to uh, sharpen it so it honestly was very time consuming in the end. Uh, however, they did come out very nicely fine pointed. I loved that. So what I did was I went to Amazon and bought another one um, called Afmat. This one is a um, automatic sharpener where uh, I can use all different kinds of sizes as well. And it automatically adjusts so you don't have to do anything. You just stick it in there and it sharpens it. And I love how sharp this one gets as well. Most people don't talk about brushes, but I'd like to uh, actually bring it up because having a brush is really nice to have when you are stuck with a bunch of the wax bloom that comes off or pencil uh, shavings, anything like that. And I do think it's really important to have uh, something that you can wipe off. This one I got on Amazon. Now on to drawing the butterfly. You can use uh, the Prismacolor pencils or any colored pencils that you have. Now pause this video and screenshot this. This is the reference image that you will use. Now I am drawing on a uh, Bristol board smooth surface paper but I am using the Faber-Castell colored pencils for this one. Uh, you can use the Prisma colors as long as you can find the uh, appropriate colors for it. So you want to start out with the uh, center of the butterfly. And what I did was I added a first layer of yellow, just very light first layer. And now I am blocking in with a B strip. B-I-S-T-R-E. That's basically a very um, warm tone, light brown colored pencil. And you want to leave room for the little uh, yellow spaces in between on the, um, for that center body. So just keep adding in the little, little details. Uh, you do want to be very careful since this is a smaller portrait, you can draw larger. And uh, for the first layer, you still want to use that yellow colored pencil and just draw very lightly. Now keep building up the light layers with that Bistra colored pencil, uh, a little bit heavier this time. And you uh, want to be sure that you are shaping the body the way that you see it in the reference image. And just draw some little antennas as well. And once you've gotten that, now I uh, started to draw a little bit of the um, outlines that spread out on the left wing in a black. I usually don't start out with black, but I wanted to uh, block in the um, 
where the blacks are just so I have a good reference as to where they're located. When you're using that Bistra colored pencil and draw the second layer after the yellow um, just further out until you see where the brown kind of stops and just make any adjustments that you need in the body. Now I am using a little bit of black to darken the sections that look like it has uh, detailed fur in it and you could see that there is a shape in the center body so um, try to replicate that shape as much as possible especially if you're drawing a bigger portrait uh, you will have more room to uh, be able to draw that detail now instead of a bright orange I used a burnt okra in the Faber-Castell but you can also use um, any kind of burnt orange color pencil um, especially if it's in the Prismacolor set and that's what I used to draw the um, orange sections in the butterfly uh, do pay attention to where you're drawing your colors because there's a specific pattern with this wing and you want to try to make sure that it's very much defined um, because you will also be replicating it on the other side. So that's what I tried to do here is um, using a black colored pencil, draw the outline of where you see all those patterns and then kind of color in using the burnt okra or any burnt orange color uh, where you see that burnt orange and make sure that you're not bleeding your colored pencils through with the black because then that will soften the black and you really want to have the uh, black as sharp as possible but you know if it happens don't fret it you can always just draw right back over it with the black Now for a darker brown, I'm using a Van Dyke brown. It's actually one of my most popular, most used colored pencils when it comes to um, brown fur or anything like that. And just use that to start drawing in uh, where you see the brown as well. Um, I also, what I did with that too, a little bit of a trick is um, I use that as my first layer for where the black is going to be, at least the bigger parts of the black, so that once you have that black on top, it is a little bit more um, defined and it's not just a straight up black uh, color. Um, so let's say if you wanted to have a, a warmer toned uh, black or a cooler tone, then that's what you would do is um, uh, the first layer is you know add a warmer color or something like a light blue color to cool it down if you also want full tutorials go and uh, become a membership at my patreon it will be linked below i will have real time as well as time lapses for you guys to watch and follow along And now I just want to fix up everything on that left side before you continue to the right. And you basically just repeat the same steps uh, from the left to the right. Now you don't have to start on the left side. I just like doing that because I'm right handed and I don't want to smudge my paper. So I like to start from left to right once I've uh, created the body um, or created the, uh, the eyes on a pet portrait or people portrait. Now uh, this one since I had a little bit more experience with the first one this one will actually go a little bit faster. Uh, the same will happen for you as well. Now I did use a little bit of an exacto knife to define some of the features in the butterfly but you don't have to do that. Um, you could see in the brown section that's closest to the body that there is a little bit of a fur texture so that's where I use the exacto knife um, but if you don't have one that's completely fine you can just 
you know, tried to draw it like it's fur. Now with the orange sections, I do want to point out that um, you really want to define where it's light and where it's dark in the orange because it's not just a flat orange color. I did make that um, kind of made a mistake in the beginning where I didn't go ahead and do that with the first couple layers, but I will go back over it and darken it using a burnt sienna, which is kind of a, um, closer to a red color. So it's kind of a reddish brown color. So now I have the black outline for the most part. So I'm just going to start drawing um, from the inside out. And I did start with that yellow layer. Uh, and it's not, the whole butterfly doesn't have that first yellow layer because that's not what you see in the image. So I just started from the body out just a little bit and then continued with that Bistra color. And then um, once I have done that, I went over with the black color pencil to, um, you know, continue defining the, um, the black lines that go over the brown. And then use the um, burnt okra to um, make sure that you have all the orange spots in there. And also use the burnt sienna to darken the sections in the orange that looks like it is um, almost like a it's not necessarily a shading because with the butterfly it's not shaded per se it's just the way that the um, butterfly looks where it has a little bit of a more red tone than orange in certain sections of the that orange uh, area so I uh, wanted to make my blacks a little bit blacker, so I'm using a um, Karen Dash Luminance black colored pencil. Now you don't, if you don't have that, then that's completely fine. Just make sure that your blacks are as black as possible and that the outer edges and every, all the black areas are as sharp as possible, especially when it comes to drawing small. You want to make sure that all your detail is as sharp as possible. And now I'm just basically fixing any mistakes that I've made um, and building up a little bit more layers and blending it in so that there's no, um, no tooth showing underneath, no white spots. Now, I, instead of an X-Acto knife, I'm using a slice tool, which is basically the same thing, uh, but it is easier to use a slice tool because it has a sharp edge and a rounded edge, and I like to use both depending on the situation. Um, but I'm just scratching away any of the little details that I see that ne needs it done. Uh, but there you have it. That is the final portrait. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this and it's helped you in any way, please uh, make a comment and uh, ask me any questions or just comment what your favorite part was. Uh, I really enjoyed making this video. I uh, it actually kind of taught me a lot keeping my thoughts together on uh, you know the necessary basics of what is uh, needed to start drawing with colored pencils. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.